Hello, I'm Dr. Cecile Cosculluela. Welcome to this English grammar video on the perfect. So, before we go on to uh, the first part of this presentation, which will answer the question, what is the perfect? I would first like to point out that the work we're doing is based on the theoretical approach by Henry Adamczewski, which has been developed in uh, La Grammaire Expliquée de l'Anglais, written by Jean-Pierre Gabilan, who used to be a student of Henry Adamczewski uh, at the University of La Sorbonne Nouvelle in Paris. And together they co-wrote a number of books that you might be interested in uh, working on as well, um, namely Déchiffrer la grammaire anglaise and Les clés de la grammaire anglaise. So this is the general framework within which we're working on. And we're working on grammar operators, which are one part of any given language. In any given language, there are three parts, vocabulary, uh, pronunciation and spelling and you need to work on these two that are really important for you to improve your knowledge of English or of any language before you can actually make sure you choose the right grammar tools, grammar operators to glue those words together and make sentences that are correct. So the grammar operators we're working on are uh, essentially verb operators for which we have made a list. So this is an exhaustive list of all the operators that are used in simple sentences in English and we're referring to them using symbols like VS for the present or VD for the past tense. All these operators always appear in the same order, which is the order of the English verb equation, uh, which is at the basis of the English verb matrix. So whenever you give a form to a verb, you first need to choose whether you're going to use the present tense or the past tense. And then modals we will mention later because these operators are not part of the basic tenses in English. So the second step for basic tenses is am I using the perfect or not? And this is what we're actually working on in this video. We're working on these four tenses here, the present perfect simple, the present perfect B plus ING and the past perfect simple and the past perfect B plus ING. Uh, so in these four tenses, the perfect uh, is an important component. So let's focus on the this tool, this operator, the perfect. The formula is half plus VN. What does the perfect mean when we use it? What is the meaning that is conveyed? So let's say we're going to explain the meaning of the perfect using a little diagram. So this is a space time line, and this is the point from which we stand. Um, and from this point, we're going to look at an event that we're wanting to express. So this second event is really what we're referring to from the standpoint of another event, which is why we're actually connecting two dots, two events, two points in the time-space reality. So we're making a connection between the two we're making an interconnection between the point from which we focus, so our standpoint, and the point on which we focus, our point of focus. 
Okay, so this is basically the meaning of the perfect. It is connecting two um, realities and the one you look at is being looked at from your specific standpoint. That is the basic meaning of the perfect. We're going to um, be more explicit as we go along in this presentation. Uh, first of all, it is important to notice that the perfect cannot be used on its own. So the perfect is necessarily associated either with the present tense or with the past tense here. And then also you need to associate the perfect either with the simple form that we have here or the B plus ing form. And when you associate the present with the perfect and the simple form, then the tense is the present perfect simple. And when you associate the present tense with the perfect and the B plus ing form, then the combination is the present perfect B plus ing. And it's the same thing basically if instead of the present we use the past. So the past with the perfect and the simple form is the the past perfect simple and what's the past perfect B plus ing? Well, well that's the association between the past tense, the perfect and B plus ing. And so uh, for these four combinations or conjugations, the basic meaning is that of interconnection. So whether the perfect is associated with the present or with the past, the basic meaning of the perfect never varies, uh, which is why it's called its invariant. And so the invariant of the perfect is always that idea of interconnection, whether the perfect is associated with the present or with the past. Uh, and um, yes, and so we have here the respective formulas. <clears throat> so Vs plus half plus Vn is the formula for the present perfect and the formula for the past perfect is Ved plus half plus Vn. Uh, now the next thing that is worth pointing out is the fact that obviously when the perfect is associated with the present the interconnection is slightly different from the one that we have when the perfect is associated with the past tense. So to make that clear, let's use diagrams. So this is our space-time line. And then let's say that this little line here represents the present, where we are, what we are in phase with the thing that is our in-phase truth value, what is valid for us when we're, we mention it. So in the case of the present perfect, what happens is that we're focusing on the standpoint of the present and looking at something that happened in the past. And so we're making the connection between what is present and what is past. Or we could also say we're interconnecting in phase and out of phase truth value events. In the case of the past perfect, we basically have the same interconnection, but relative to our um, benchmark here of the present, there's a slight difference. Between, because our standpoint is not in the present anymore, it is in the past. So uh, we're focusing on the past and from that standpoint we're looking at an event that's even more in the past. So this interconnection is basically always the link between two points but this time the first point is in the past, it's out of phase, and the second one is even more out of phase. Okay, so that's uh, basically 
um, the the slight difference that the the that we need to take into account. We need to adapt the meaning of interconnection depending on whether it is associated with the present or with the past. Uh, let's uh, give examples. So the first example, he has seen her in the present perfect simple. In that case, we could say that first of all, he has uh, is actually the viewpoint, the standpoint from which we look at the other event thing that he did and so he has seen her basically we can state now that something happened before so the perfect is all about being able to say something now say uh, confirm affirm now state now that something happened in the past he has done that before he has seen her um, in the past tense so let's take the example now of he had seen her in the past perfect simple so um, if we explain that with a little diagram again we can see that first of all we're standing in the past and we're saying at that point in the past he had okay he had um, done that before so we're then connecting with the second point that's even further back in the past he had at that point in time that's in the past done something even further back in the past he had seen her so the same interconnection, the only thing is that we need to adapt it to the timeline because uh, in the case of the present perfect, our standpoint is in the present and we're referring to an event in the past. And in the case of the past perfect, we're focusing on an event that's in the past and from that standpoint, we're looking at an event that's even further back in the past. As regards translation, it might be tempting to uh, think that it's about the same in other languages. He has seen her in English is more or less the same as il l'a vu in French or he l'a visto in Spanish or er hat sie gesehen in German and uh, in the past perfect we could make the same remarks and think that you know translating is easy we just have to go word for word that's not the case at all I'm just uh, I'm just making sure that you do not fall in that uh, trap so he had seen her is quite like il l'avait vu in French or la había visto in Spanish or er hat sie gesehen in German but we absolutely need to make sure that we uh, do not translate word for a word unless we know that's, that this is our best option. Um, so contrary to appearances, we need to make sure that we understand the meaning of the verb form in English before we can translate it and word for word cannot be used as a general rule at all. A quick example for you to remember uh, not to translate word for word systematically. In this um, excerpt from the a movie by Woody Allen, have you been seeing someone? It would be tempting to translate word for word if we're not we've not been working on translation at all, but we do know that translating implies understanding and in this case the proper translation implies translating with the present tense in French tu vois quelqu'un and if you pause the video to read the script here or even have a look at the movie 
it will seem really clear to you that the meaning expressed by the past perfect encompasses the present and the past and this is exactly the meaning conveyed by the present tense in French. So basically our conclusion is that in order to translate you need to know that the translation process is not dual um, and you can't translate a source sign directly by a target sign. What you need to do is basically R1, O2, I3. This little formula is here to remind you basically that in order to translate correctly you need to make sure you understand the meaning of the source text. So you read, you understand, and then you uh, express the same idea in the target language. So uh, this last example was about the translation of the present perfect by the present tense in French. And there's also the question of how to distinguish, how to know when to use the present perfect and not the past tense in English. So how to deal with these different verb forms. This will be the subject of the second part of our videos on the perfect. Uh, so um, we'll deal with that question in the next video. We hope to see you there and we wish you in the meantime uh, all the best.